Welcome back to Beg, Borrow, Steal, where last season, despite being ranked at 1,000 to 1 for the title and predicted to finish dead last, we defied all expectations and qualified for Europe. So this season, we're predicted to finish dead last again. Just while we're waiting for assistant manager Scott to pick me up ready for training, we've got just enough time for a Patreon update and we're welcoming another new supporter to the channel. This time we're saying a huge thank you to Tim, who has signed up as a top tier patron. We'll put a little link in the video description down below if anybody else would like to check out the Patreon page. But we're going to head over to the training ground in a moment. We're going to kick off today's episode with the draw for the Europa Conference League. So we'll watch the whole thing and have a look at what other sides we've got in there. Some of them are behind me, but I'll read them out to you. Chelsea are in there. So a Club Bruges, Galatasaray, PSV Eindhoven, Nice. These are some tough, tough teams that we could be playing. So this could be tricky. We will start the draw off. Let's go for the automatic draw and see how long it takes us before we are mentioned. We've got Beitar, Jerusalem or Pauk. I'll take it, but we didn't get them. We got Dundee United. I'll definitely take it, but we didn't get them. St. Gallen, Bromby. Against Europa, we've been drawn against what I think is the oldest club in Swiss football in St. Gallen. Stand to be corrected on that. Or Danish side Bromby. I reckon that's a better draw for us than some of the other options that we could have had. Certainly staying away from the likes of Chelsea, I think is preferable to having to go to the likes of Stamford Bridge and somehow qualify over two legs for the group stage of this competition. The draw goes on. We've still got some of the bigger teams left in it. I'm pretty pleased to have got St. Gallen or Bronby as the team we're going to play. Club Bruges were drawn late on. Chelsea, Augsburg were drawn late on. Galatasaray are in this draw as well. Partizan Belgrade would have been tough opposition. Genk, I think, would have been an absolute tough trip. PSV would probably have been a non-starter. So St. Gallen, or potentially the Danish club Bromby, I think is a pretty decent draw. Those two clubs have still got to play against each other in their second leg before we'll know which one of those two we will be taking on. But compared to some of the other teams in that draw, I'm not too disheartened. So now we know that our first European tie as Europa boss will see us heading to either Switzerland or Denmark. Let's update you on some of the events of the off-season now. Just before the end of the season, we had planned works to both our training ground and our youth facilities upgraded. So as soon as we hit into the pre-season break, I went into the boardroom and asked for further improvements to both those facilities, and we were successful. So we've got training facilities that should be done around about the end of November time and youth facilities should be done by the middle of December. That means that by the time we hit January, if we're in good form, then we should be able to ask for yet more improvements. Our facilities before the planned work is even done are good training facilities, good youth facilities, good academy coaching and average youth recruitment. I think improving the youth recruitment is the next thing that we're looking to do, but we've also got Two improvements in the bag already for training and youth facilities. I think our chances of improving facilities further in January are pretty good because the finances are looking strong. We've got just shy of 25 million in the bank. We've got a transfer budget of almost 6 million that we could move over to the wages, but we're comfortably under what is a very generous wage budget of almost half a million pounds per week. So we've used some of that to strengthen our squad. I don't know how good the business we've done in the transfer window is. We've definitely got numbers. Have we got improvements in quality? Are we weaker than last season? I think if we show you the players, you'll be able to tell us. So let's start our transfer update by showing you who we've not bought in. I'm afraid Olawasagun Ikachukwu is not going to be rejoining us on loan. We can make an offer for him. We could bring him in. But unfortunately, whereas last season, Fulham were willing to let him go out as long as we covered his wages, now they want £325,000 a month 
and that's if he plays. They want £675,000 a month for him to just sit on the bench. I've decided that paying monthly loan fees is really like making a transfer. And the idea of this whole series is to see if we can get to the top of Spanish football without spending any money on transfers at all. So unless Fulham lower their demands, and they might do on transfer deadline day, I'm afraid we're going to have to do without Ikachukwu. But we do have another player that we signed last season that you've not seen yet. This is Gustavo, who is a new gen, but because of the hideous nature of the new gen faces, I got fed up with them and I've patched them up myself. Now, Gustavo joined us a year ago and I got him as an absolute bargain, a free transfer that I bought in on £400 per week. I was laughing all the way to the bank. I wasn't laughing when it came to register the squad and it wouldn't let me register him unless he was paid £2,500 a week minimum and he wouldn't renegotiate a new contract because he'd only just joined the club, so I had to ship him out on loan for a year. He's gone and played down in the Spanish, well, I think that's the fourth tier of Spanish football, where he scored seven goals and played 25 games, although 22 of those were sub-appearances. So he's been a bench warmer in the fourth tier, and I'm bringing him back into the top flight. I don't think he's a bad player, to be honest. I like his personality, physically and mentally. All round, he's pretty good. As a central midfielder, I realise his passing is not going to be great, but I see him as a backup, probably for Cordoba, as our central midfielder on attack, just coming in from the occasional game, a substitute appearance here and there, he at least gives us greater strength in depth. But I did think a key area to try and improve during the window was up front. We've got Rossi, who's a key starter for us. We've got Aziz and Ambula, who really are wingers filling in up front. And both of them can be a little bit streaky in their goal scoring. So I've brought in two new attacking options. The first, probably for the here and now, this is Tyrese John Jules, who's pretty quick, reasonable dribbler and finisher, good first touch, quite like the off the ball, the composure's not bad. The red flag with Tyrese John Jules, he's never played in the top flight in England. He's been playing with Cardiff down in League One, although he was scoring goals. He was good for Cardiff at that level the season before. And in the championship, he's managed to bag 17 in 44 for Millwall three or four years ago. But he's never really played in the Premier League. So he's untested at the top level. But I think he's going to be a good option for us. One that's maybe a little bit more for the future is Brendan McComb. I apologise for the face, the new gen that came through at this rather bizarre mohawk that I had to try and match up. But this player, I think, has got a bit of potential. Looks very, very quick. In fact, the physicality is good all round. I love agility and balance coupled with dribbling. For a striker, it means that he can get on the rampage. I also think he's a pretty decent finisher. The composure's okay. The off the ball's okay. And with this personality, I'm hopeful that we might be able to stick a number or two on plenty of these areas to his game. So Brendan McComb is another player I'm pretty happy to get through the door. And if I give him some game time this season, hopefully he will improve. Another player who I've taken a bit of a punt on to try and develop for the future is a French player called Raphael Gori, who was released by PSG. Maybe the club he was at swayed my decision on signing him. He's got good passing, his teamwork and his work rate are okay. Physically, there's some work to do, but he's not a write-off. Mentally, I don't like that bravery for a midfielder, but I do like his first touch and some of the more technical elements to his game. I'm not saying he's going to be a starter. He's another player that's going to provide a little bit of backup, but we've also made some more recent additions to the team that might force their way into the first 11. So the first position we'll show you is at left back, where we have struggled. We let our Iraqi 33-year-old leave at the end of the season. So whether Ishmael Bora has come through as our first choice option or our backup, well, we'll be determined by how he performs, I guess. He was happy to come in as a squad player, but he could be pushing for the starting 11, I think. Technically, he's not out of this world, but physically he's competitive. Mentally, he's got all of the areas that's important to our DNA, like the determination and the teamwork and the work rate. He's picked up a couple of knocks during pre-season, so 
It's not fully integrated into the squad, but he could be a decent option. We've also had big news in terms of players that could have left the club. We had an offer for our keeper, Davide Barose. Wait for it. The offer was from Real Madrid. His release clause is just £10 million. We're a little bit twitchy about that, despite the fact that we were very anti Barossi during his first season at the club. In his second last campaign, he was a bit of a stalwart for us. If Real Madrid come back and match his release clause, he will be out the door. He's none too pleased that we turned an offer for him down. So we've bought in a pretty decent alternative, I think. Sonny Layton is happy to be our number two keeper. And I don't think stats wise, this is the worst backup keeper to have. At a side the size of Europa. He's got good aerial reach, jumping reach. He's got good strength as well. He's six foot three. Is it going to be a powerful option? His command of area is good. Communication's not too bad. Handling is okay. Granted, the one on ones are a little bit low. Maybe even you'd like things like the positioning to be a little bit higher for a keeper. But I don't think he's the worst option in the world. And then we've also bought in. A player knowing that Ikechukwu wasn't going to return. So I think Jose Muller is going to be a starting centre-back for us. He's a 24-year-old Portuguese player. And again, I think all round he's not too bad. He's not Ikechukwu granted. But he's six foot four. He's going to be great in the air. For a player that's going to be so dominant aerially, he's not the slowest either. The tackling, the marking, the heading, the positioning, the concentration, they're all... Just about good enough for the top flight. I think he's going to need to acclimatise a little bit. And I think, in terms of trying to replace Ikechukwu, that's not the worst option that we could have bought in. So granted, none of the players we've bought in are absolute stunners. But what they are is strength in depth. Because we've not really lost too many players either. We've not sold anybody, although we have released a few players at the end of their contracts. So old favourites like Mickey, who was oh so fine in the early days, but really was only ever going to be an emergency backup for us in La Liga. Or we've let players like that go. Kevin Carlos has moved on as well. He's looking for a new club. And also old players like Simone Muratori, who have been out on loan for a couple of seasons. They've left the club as well. We had a gap at left back when we let Durgham Ishmael go. That, that has been filled in by the French player that we bought in. So we've lost a few players, but not players that were ever going to feature. And the ones that we've bought in, well, I think they're going to give us better strength in depth. Tactically, I'm pretty happy with the way we finished the last campaign. This 4-1 central three and two strikers, I think, worked well. I'm also going to think about two variants of this tactic going into the new season. When we beat Barcelona, I dropped the mentality to balanced and I changed our two fullbacks from being wingbacks on support to fullbacks on support. I think I will create a tactic where we do that again when we play the big boys, Real Madrid, Barca, Atletico, even Villarreal. I think that could be the way that we go. But I also think some clubs might be a little bit more cautious against us this season, particularly if we start well. So I'm also thinking about a third variant of this tactic where we take our halfback and maybe move them into the number 10 slot to try and be a little bit more potent and creative when we're going forward. Let us know down in the comments section if you've had any luck with that kind of tactic. And can playing a 4-3-1-2 be an effective way of breaking teams down? So there's where we're looking so far. We're going to come back for a European game against either St. Gallen or Bromby. Let us know down in the comments section what you think of our transfer business. I know it's not great, but do you think we've now got enough strength in depth to avoid second season syndrome? We're still 1,000 to one shots. We're still predicted to finish bottom of the table. I'm nervous that we might have a disappointing campaign and that we might be playing a lot of football and it might rub off on our league form being potentially quite poor. Do you think we've got a squad so that I can rotate it enough to try and prevent that happening? We'll see you for Wednesday's episode. It's going to be our first game in Europe as we continue beg, borrow, steal.